Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. I always look forward to my weekly visit to Horse Center with you. Yeah. Hey, we might be uh, nearly a thousand miles apart, Matt, but we get to see each other every week. That's that's pretty great. This week, Matt, we're going to go Kentucky Derby. Yeah, it's early. It's six months away still, Matt. But uh, this is our first look at. Take it, take it for what it is. It's a, it's a look at it, the top two year olds that we've seen. It's an early preview of the Kentucky Derby Trail that uh, goes next week and and moves certainly into the early months of next year. It might be a preview for the Preakness, as we saw last year. National Treasure skipping the Derby and going straight to the Preakness, but. Uh, First and foremost, we're going to call it a Kentucky Derby preview show. Matt and I have voted. We've ranked our top 12 horses each. We have a consensus. Matt, are you ready? I am ready. Let's go. We got 12. Let's do it. Number one will be no surprise. Matt, I thought about not having this one as number one, but in the end, after that Breeders' Cup juvenile performance, I couldn't put anybody else but fierceness on top of the list. Yeah, I have to agree with you, Brian. Uh, that was one of the most impressive uh, victories, Breeders' Cup weekend, not just Friday, but Friday and Saturday together, in my opinion. A real bounce back performance after the sloppy track in the Champagne kind of uh, 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 had a, a lot of question marks up about this uh Mike Rapoli homebred, and boy, uh, he ran a, a big, big race, a fast race also. The kind of time that, you know, and speed figure that can, a real Kentucky Derby contender needs to have. Yeah, a, a real, really good two-year-old, and I guess that was proven in two out of his three career races. As you say, the Champagne was a flop, a bad start, a sloppy track, didn't really run at all. But the other two races, Matt, he won by more than 17 lengths combined. Uh, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile was run nearly three seconds faster than the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. So uh, uh, obviously a very talented horse. City of Light was a very talented horse. The Sire, uh, probably best at a mile-ish or so. Uh, City of Light stretched out to nine furlongs. We'll see about fearless, fierceness. A uh, talented uh, broodmare on the track, Nana Bella, but she was pretty lightly raced. The broodmare sire stayed thirsty. Matt was a, a winner, of course, a grade one winner at 10 furlong. So an interesting breeding there. And as you said, it's all Mike Rapoli. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, speaking of breeding, I think most of the horses uh, uh, on our list, all 12 of them have, uh, have breeding that at least they have a chance to get the derby distance. Yeah, I, I felt the same way, Matt. I didn't think there was one horse on this list where I said, now that's going to be a sprinter. And maybe uh, maybe that's one of the reasons uh, sprinters are not on this list because we are looking forward to all those two turns races on the derby trail. Uh, by the way, Fierceness is the only homebred out of the 12 on this list. Let's go to number two. And number two, we had a bit of a disagreement because you had him two, I had him three, uh, pretty close. Uh, good performances all the way around for youth in four career races. Yeah, uh, certainly uh, one of the most experienced horses on this list in in terms of facing good competition, in terms of facing uh, uh, graded stakes company from the barn of Bob Bathart. And you can see on the graphic that asterisk is still with Bob Baffert and the the uh, contenders trained by him that they're going to have to move to another trainer at some point to get qualified for the Derby and, and subsequently run in the Derby if, uh, um, if they are going to do that. But, but, but Muth second place uh, in the uh, Breeders' Cup Juvenile beating the rest of that field, but not getting particularly close to fierceness a win in the American Pharaoh grade one, a second in the best pal to one of his uh, stable mates. Yeah. Muth. Uh, I, I thought Muth ran four good races, a good debut performance, uh, a tough, probably a tough trip, probably had a little bit of excuse in the best pal when his stable mate Prince of Monaco beat him. 
uh, good win around two turns in the American Pharaoh. Got a grade one win there. And as you said, second, uh, albeit a pretty well beaten second in that Breeders' Cup Juvenile. He looks like the uh, the top Californian as we uh, get ready to uh, change the calendars to 2024. And of course, Muth was a $2 million purchase as a two-year-old Matt. So uh, probably no surprise that we're talking about Muth as one of the best two-year-olds. Uh, Looking forward, we would look for Muth to be a top three-year-old early in the season. But as you say, uh, we'll, we'll see if we get that trainer change uh, to uh, get him into the Kentucky Derby. The next horse on our list, Matt, is my number two, your number three. And to tell you the truth, I even toyed, Matt, I toyed <laughs> with putting Locked at number one. But I, I think that's just me wanting to see a horse who really uh, – is going to be a 10 furlong horse and not truly who is the best two-year-old in in 2023. i really like the way locked is finishing off his races he had some trouble in his debut performance when he was third rallied on nicely to be third looked like he wasn't getting anywhere fast uh, as the favorite for the breeders cup juvenile but if you watch the stretch run he was really running it was the two pletcher horses running at the wire and locked was the one picking up horses and was going to be second soon in that breeders cup juvenile yeah, and uh, uh, you mentioned Todd Pletcher, uh, as folks may have noticed. Two of the top three on our list are from the barn of of Todd Pletcher. You know, we always know how good he is with uh, with the two year olds. Um, locked uh, like third in the Breeders Cup Juvenile, and is a Grade One winner already, winning that Breeders Futurity at uh, Keeneland last month. Yeah, I, I think we're kind of splitting hairs between our two and our three. We we kind of reverse the two, but they both have run four times. They both run very well four times. Uh, they're both Grade One winners around two turns. Maybe the difference. Uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, boost up my horse, uh, uh, my number two over your number two. Maybe the difference is Locked has done it all over the country, while Muth has been a Southern California horse. We're gonna see Matt. Uh, I think the top three are not surprising anybody. Uh, certainly you had them as your top three, but after our top three, Matt, we get pretty, uh, uh, the differences start to appear. Uh, number four, though, is a horse that we both had to have on our list. Let's take a look at him now. And, and unfortunately, I never, I, I, I tried to find out. Um, I don't have a good, uh, I don't have Mike Maker on speed dial, Matt, but I never <laughs> did find out why he was scratched. I don't know if you ever heard the reason for his scratch, he was scratched out of the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Yeah, I I, I don't think it was anything significant um, uh, in uh, preparing for the show. I did take a look on uh, Equibase, and it looks like he is still in training. So I don't think it's anything particularly major. And, you know, I think if you had called uh, Mike Maker to ask him, he probably wouldn't have had too much – uh, to say anyway, just referring to the uh, taciturn nature of, of Mike Maker, who, who uh, is a, a good guy and a really good and a really good trainer. But yeah, Wine Stewart, New York bred. Uh, um, interestingly, he uh, has won his first three starts and, and in his four starts in his career, he has run at four different tracks already got two stakes wins. He won that Bashford Manor down in Kentucky. Uh, then he won the funny side in New York and was a second uh, in the Breeders Futurity that we mentioned before when we were talking about Locked. Yeah, if you like Locked, I, I think there's good reason to like the wine steward. By the way, I've had uh, more than more than one or two conversations with Mike Maker and they were all short. <laughs> and I don't mean that as a negative. So yeah, Mike Maker, a man, a few words. Uh, the wine steward is son of Vino Rosso, uh, two out and serve, kind of uh, in that city of light realm where maybe he was best at a mile, but certainly able to get two turns. But Vino Rosso, of course, was a horse who appreciated 10 for long. So it'll be interesting to see. This is his first crop. It'll be interesting to see what his sons and daughters do. But I would fully expect them to uh, stretch out. And the wine steward was doing well, winning those first three races, as you say, at different tracks and two stakes while sprinting and, and then uh then the race with locked i mean those two separated themselves from a pretty good grade one field at keeneland 
And uh, the wine steward gave Locke all he wanted in that grade one greater futurity. So there's still a lot to like about the wine steward. Uh, New York bread, by the way, I, I don't know if we mentioned that yet. He's a New York bread, the only New York bread on the list. Locked was a $425,000 a yearling purchase. Uh, the wine steward was a $340,000 two-year-old uh, sales purchase, Matt. So we're seeing a, a trend here after we got through the uh, the homebred, uh, who was, of course, fierceness number one on our list. We're seeing a lot of uh, expensive purchases, and that's going to move forward with our number five horse. Another horse we both had on our list uh, pretty prominently, and another horse who was uh, a pretty high price horse this uh timberlake for brad cox matt was a three hundred and fifty thousand dollar yearling purchase yes absolutely brian and this is another one who has got good stakes experience already uh was second in the hopeful at saratoga he won that uh champagne stakes uh which has turned out to be a pretty strong race and then was fourth in the breeders cup juvenile for yeah, Timberlake. yeah, Timberlake hasn't run a bad race either. Uh, the hopeful and the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, I think you can make uh, some excuses there where the hopeful was just a jam of uh, horses near the lead early, and he was the one that hung around best. And, and in the Breeders' Cup, it, they said he was a little over eager early, and, and he stuck around to be fourth best in the best juvenile race of the year. Um, I find his breeding, by the way, Matt, very interesting because into mischief certainly is one of america's best sires you look at the other side looking at lucky was a two-turn a very nice two-turn two-time champion uh but that mare is an irish bred mare and i see saddler's wells immediately in her uh family so there's some real distance potential here for timberlake out of that irish bred mare bred to uh into mischief and as i said a three hundred and fifty thousand dollar yearling in the barn of brad cox matt nothing wrong with that combination for sure so the first five horses on the list map they were all horses that we both had on our top 12. now we start getting to horses where we differ more and we'll start with a horse very high on my list uh his name is knight's bridge a son of nyquist and and i've really begun or continued to appreciate nyquist more and more as a sire a versatile sire they can sprint, they can they can go two turns, they can go turf, they can go dirt. Knightsbridge looked awfully good, breaking his maiden first time out for trainer Bill Mock. Yes, and, and a horse that was certainly impressive for Bill Mott on debut. Won that race by open lengths, by ten and a half lengths in a seven furlong contest uh, in a maiden special weight at Churchill Downs. Uh, last month so uh, uh you know we don't know too much about this one except that was very impressive and a pedigree also for a horse to to go along with nyquist uh, as the sire and a bernardini mare yeah yeah we're seeing more bernardini mares lately i don't think tyburn brook ever ran but this is a go dolphin palm bread so obviously tyburn brook the mare uh, it, it comes from good, uh, uh, good bloodlines, and I, I agree with you there. Uh, that ten and a half length win was actually at Keeneland, and uh, studied a little bit in between horses. And then when he got clear, it was all Knightsbridge down the lane. One of the more impressive maiden performances that we've seen so far. You ready for number seven, Matt? We're halfway through already. Yep. Bring it on, number seven. I think this is going to be one of yours that wasn't on my list, and it's the most experienced horse on the list, Matt. Yeah, I think that that was that was the, one of the main reasons that uh, he got onto my list uh, with seven starts already uh, and and a stakes victory in the Iroquois uh, at Churchill Downs, a Grade Three. Um, he was in that Breeders' Futurity also that we've been talking about and finish fifth i have a feeling and and it'll be interesting with these contenders that we have on the list who were the who of these contenders are we going to see in the early kentucky derby prep races coming up uh, uh uh shortly picking up in those in those 10 point races and which ones on this list do we see take a little winter break and show up later on so this might be one that we see earlier 
Yeah, we could see as early as next week in the Kentucky Jockey Club. I'm not going to wait till the end of the show to fix my mistakes, Matt, or, or, or correct myself. I earlier said fierceness was the only homebred on our list. And of course, I just said that Knightsbridge is a Godolphin homebred. So there's two homebreds on the list. West Saratoga, however, does not fit the mold of any horse on this list, Matt, because two homebreds, nine expensive uh, purchases uh, in the sales ring. West Saratoga is anything but. He was purchased for $11,000 as a yearling. Uh, I didn't love his last race. That's why I didn't have him on the list. Uh, Keeneland, well, well beaten, of course, by Locked and uh, the Wine Steward. But before that, you mentioned it, a nice stakes win, beat some good horses at Churchill Downs. I can see why you, Matt, included West Saratoga on your list. Okay, so number eight, Matt, is going to be a horse that I believe is on my list, but not your list. We're, we're, oh, oh, no, no, uh, I'm wrong again. This is a horse that was on both of our lists. This is a Baffert. Interesting little fact about Nisos, number eight on our Kentucky Derby contender list here. Our first look at the Kentucky Derby contenders. He's already been sold three times. He was sold as a weanling. He was sold as a yearling. And he was sold as a two-year-old in training for $550,000, Matt. And you know what barn he ended up in. Yeah, in the barn of Bob Baffert. And I think that that third purchase price, as I recall, was a pretty big jump uh, in price from the weanling and yearling uh, uh, prices. So this is a horse that must have start to gr started to grow up and, and, and look, pretty, look pretty handsome. Another Nyquist, another Bernardini mare. Uh, um, and for Baffert, uh, as we are accustomed to, another big victory in a maiden special way. This was uh, last month at Santa Anita by more than 10 lengths. More than 10 lengths, and he did it in 108 and change. He announced himself as a precocious, talented horse, but he's never been farther than six furlongs. The debut performance, though, was so good that Matt and I both had him in our top 12. All right, rolling right along. We're going to go to number nine here, Matt. One more horse that we both had on our list. This is a horse we haven't seen in a while. But when last seen, Rhyme Schemes was on a bit of a roll. Yes, uh, Rhyme Schemes for our friend Norm Cassie out on his own and, and doing well, was, uh, uh, was training and running up at Saratoga this summer where, where Norm had a, a very, very strong meeting. And this one became a stakes winner of the grade two Saratoga special and did it very, very impressively winning by close to 10 lengths. Yeah. Right. Rhyme schemes was interesting. Maybe, maybe the most interesting horse uh, into the summer this year, he, 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 did, he had some issues in his debut. Uh, didn't hit the board as you see there, but this son of ghost zapper out of the distorted humor mare uh, came back and, and maybe his maiden win at Ellis Park was every bit as impressive as his graded stakes win at Saratoga. By the way, both of those wins came at nine and a half furlongs. One was five and a half furlongs. One was six and a half furlongs. We'll have to see. But as a son of Ghost Zapper, a grandson of Awesome again, I would think this horse has the potential certainly to get two turns. And uh, those two nine and a half length wins at Ellis Park and Saratoga, uh, we could not forget about that, Matt, as we're talking about the, the best two-year-olds of, of 2023 and the horses we're most looking forward to next year for 2024 all right so those the last two horses matt were the sixth and the seventh horses that made both of our top 12s now we'll go back to horses where only one of us had on our top 12 and we'll start with coach prime matt uh rhyme schemes i didn't mention it he was a 2000 210,000 yearling purchase coach prime you ready for this? Yep. One point seven million dollar yearling. So he was. Uh, he they, they didn't even wait. Often you see these Baffert high prices go as two year olds in training, so Baffert can see them on the track. But they didn't even wait on this guy. A quality road out of a nice street sense mare that just sold for a good chunk of change at Keeneland uh, this week. Coach Prime, one point seven million dollar yearling. He debuted on turf, Matt. 
Yeah, which is certainly unusual for uh, Mr. Baffert. And uh, he got his maiden victory, I think, just last week. Uh, so maybe that was why he slipped through the cracks uh, uh, on my list. And uh, he did it uh, at Del Mar last week by more than seven lengths going a mile. Yeah, it, it makes me think of Reincarnate a little bit, where Reincarnate had some turf races early on as well. Uh, this one, Qual Quality Road is a sire that that pretty much can do it all as well as a sire. Of course, he was a very, very talented grade one winner himself, uh, although he had some issues uh, with uh, keeping himself in line, if you will. But Quality Road's become a top-notch sire. We've seen Baffert go to Quality Road uh, uh, with several good horses over the years. Coach Prime ran one mile on the grass. It was a good performance. He was third in a big field on the grass. Came back at Del Mar. Really liked what I saw there. Also at a mile, as you say, won by more than seven lengths. Coach Prime looks like he might be a horse who can at least potentially or partially, I'm not sure what I'm saying here, partially live up to that $1.7 million yearling price tag. We'll have to see. But Coach Prime looked good, as you say, Matt, last week at Del Mar. Number 11 is going to be one of your horses. And to tell you the truth, Matt, I almost included Risk It on mine. A lot to like from this Steve Asmussen trained runner. Yeah, a lot to like, particularly in the in the bloodlines, uh, uh, bred by, uh, uh, by, by Winchell uh, Farms, uh, son of gun runner. And, and this one uh, is off to a good start in his career, won his... Uh, won his debut, and then was second in the Iroquois that we mentioned earlier in the show. This one is currently in training and working, so I have a feeling uh, Risk It might be one that we see in some of these early uh, 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 derby prep races, maybe the ones out at Prairie Meadows and stuff as uh, Asmussen likes to get horses into those fields. Or we might see him again in that Kentucky Jockey Club next week at Churchill Downs. This, this is a horse who makes a lot of sense moving forward. Gun runner out of a broken vow mare. There's a lot of two-turn uh, potential and pedigree there. Nice debut winner at Saratoga. Uh, I, I didn't think he was the best horse in the year, Coy, that day, but it was only his second career race, and he certainly didn't run bad. Second, splitting some good horses. Uh, I would look for Risk It to get better and better for one of the best trainers in the business. So, again, Matt, I, I have no qualms with you having him pretty prominently on your list. Number 12, I think, is going to be uh, one that was on my list and not your list, Matt. Let's look at him. Uh, I know you're regretting already not having Art of Defiance on your list. <laughs> Brad Cox. Brad Cox. Uh, you know, you can't go wrong with Brad Cox these way. Uh, these days quality road quality road again so I, I guess i jumped on the quality roads with not, uh, without even thinking about it ghost zapper mare uh plenty of potential to be a two-turn horse his name is art of defiance yep an another one of the sources on this list that have that breeding uh to to go a longer distance um art of defiance uh Broke his maiden last month. Another one yet did that at Keeneland. Um, and he did it by six lengths. And it was in a seven furlong uh, distance. So already uh, uh, starting out going a little bit longer. Yeah. And, and we've been talking about high-priced uh, horses here. Risk It, I didn't mention yet. He was a half a million dollar yearling purchase. Uh, in the Asmussen barn, Air of Defiance in the Cox barn was a $400,000 yearling purchase. So again, they fit in with uh, these high priced horses doing well and showing off well at the track. Art of Defiance for good or for bad um, ran against a very good horse and was able to get second to Fierceness. Uh, he had a little trouble at the start, but he was second by... Uh, what was it, Matt? 11, yeah. 11 or more lengths in that uh, debut for both Fierceness and Art of Defiance. So I don't know if that's a, a feather in his cap for not running second to Fierceness in their debut, but he was beaten a whole lot. But he came back nicely, as you said, at Keeneland, winning off in a seven furlong maiden race. Hasn't been two turns yet, but that breeding would suggest uh, two turns will be in his uh, 
in his wheelhouse, if you will. Art of Defiance, I think, will be one to watch as we move forward as well. Uh, a whole bunch of horses made one of our rankings, not both. Uh, let me mention mine real quick. I have two on this list, Matt. Liberal Arts uh, was actually third in that race. We've talked about a bunch. Iroquois, uh, I guess that was behind uh, West Saratoga and Risk It. He was a good third there, but he came back with a really nice uh, stakes win last time at Churchill. He can rally. Liberal Arts, I think, uh, will be heard from more this year as well as moving into next year. And I couldn't completely throw out Prince of Monaco. Uh, uh, I know he was only fifth, uh, kind of middle of the pack in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. That was his first try around two turns. I think Prince of Monaco showed enough early on in his career where I think he could bounce back for trainer Bob Baffert. Matt, you had three that weren't on my list and didn't make our consensus top 12. Yeah, and, and again, lighter rate, light, more lightly raced horses that – uh, have the pedigrees and 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 good and good maiden victories on the list. We'll see. Uh, we'll see where they end up and how they advance. Yeah, I want to met, mention one of yours because he's very interesting. If if you haven't been watching South Florida racing, uh, Bet yeah. Ben Tornado Ben Bet, Bet Norado. Uh, again, I I am a, a master at butchering pronunciations, <laughs> but Bet Tornado. Uh, is four for four, I believe, down there, Matt. Yeah, he's looked yeah. good. I want to see him stretch out, but he's one to watch down in South Florida. All right, that's our list. That's 12. And those are, like I said, take it for what it is. Uh, 12 of the best two-year-olds in the country in 2023. Uh, 12 of the horses to look forward to as we really get into these Kentucky Derby trail races. Uh, or 12 horses to start thinking about if you're making early wagers on the Kentucky Derby, Matt. So, I think that was fun. I think that's a good list that we came up with, a good consensus list that we came up with full of uh, potential stars and, and, and horses that we already knew about pretty well. Before we go on this early look at the Derby, can I get a parting shot from you, my friend? Absolutely, Brian. And it, and it will be interesting to see uh, at what point we see these horses on the Derby trail again. Uh, I think pretty obviously the number one horse, uh, Fierceness, who already has 30 Derby uh, qualifying points we probably are not going to see for a while. I would imagine it would be one of the ones for Pletcher and Rapoli that shows up uh, uh, in the, on the Derby trail at Gulfstream Park in the, you know, in the Holy Bowl, probably uh, not right away uh, in those races at Florida. And as always, you know, I want to thank all the Horse Center fans for watching the show. Yeah, last last year, uh, of course, uh, same connections for yeah. the two-year-old champion and the two-year-old champion uh, expected to be two-year-old champion this year, uh, Forte and Fierceness. And yeah, Forte uh, didn't appear until the Fountain of Youth, uh, winning the Fountain of Youth and the Florida Derby last year. So uh, maybe a similar path will be forged for Fierceness, who, as I said, is... Uh, pretty much sure to be uh, uh, voted as the two-year-old champion off that huge performance in the British Cup Juvenile. Enough talking, Matt. Thank you. As Matt said, to everybody watching, we sure appreciate you tuning in to Horse Center. We enjoy doing the show for you every week. If you haven't uh, turned on those notifications, subscribe to the channel, of course, Horse Racing Nation uh, here at YouTube. Also, uh, uh, leave, a, uh, um, leave a comment for Matt and I. We enjoy reading them. Uh, maybe there's some horses that you think uh, – uh, should have been on our list that weren't. So we want to hear about it. Thank you to our sponsor, Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. Matt and I will be back next week and we'll be talking uh, about live races, uh, of course, because we have a big uh, holiday weekend, big Thanksgiving weekend of stakes races. Until then, see you then. Good luck at the races. We'll be back on Horse Center in a week.